Craig, what do you want? Interrupting my Diablo four time. Yeah, thank you, Craig, for dragging him in here off of Diablo four. Yes, I, 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 I have the light. <laughs> I haven't even talked to him in four days. <laughs> well, because you, you're not playing yet, everyone needs to join up and play. We got to no, save the world again from Diablo I, I, a fourth time. We have so many problems with how Wizards of the Coast and uh, and company run their business, and now you're doing the exact same kind of nonsense with uh, Blizzard, aka Activision. <laughs> like I, you have no idea how mad I am at that company right now. Because you have to spend twenty dollars extra to play, the play fact at that, the release date. The, the, the fact that you can pay. 20 extra dollars to play six days ahead of everybody else like that is the scummiest business practice that i hope dies with diablo 4 i will I, never pay that ever well looking at how many people are playing diablo 4 i think I know. it's gonna work oh i'm sure blizzard made a goddamn killing off of it uh like i looked at my <laughs> friends list last night and there were seven people on there and i don't <laughs> have that many friends on blizzard <laughs> on the on that account so speaking of shady business practices a little while ago we talked about how wizards was using um hot pockets to sell oh uh, yeah <laughs> magic the gathering cards and all of the all the basically cross promotion that the D D movie had as well too yeah um i got another pro i got another product ever in the mail today for from chipotle okay all right because i love chipotle the Chipotle came out. Uh, they have the Street Fighter VI um, burrito order extra. Basically, if you order a burrito and you give them a, a, a digital code, they'll give you 250 fighter coins so you can buy your characters in Street Fighter VI. Okay. Now, I'm not sure what's the level of scumminess here from you know raising book prices to um, buy a burrito, get fighter coins and spend I, okay, fighter so, coins on Street Fighter characters or 20 bucks extra to play Diablo six days early. I don't yeah, know. On, on, a one to, on a one to ten scale, scummiest, <laughs> scummiest business practices, the Diablo move of paying 20 bucks extra to pay six days early, that's a that's a ten. Like that's... Well, I, by that, the time you get the game, I'm going to be done with it. Oh, I know. No, I'm, I'm actually I, I'm very much up in the air if, if I even want to play this thing. Like mm. that's that's how mad about it I am, <laughs> uh, because you're going to be done with it. You've probably already beaten it, or you're near the end. And no, I, it turn, turns out I, what happened to me is the same thing that happens to me in most uh, open world games, where you my made, uh, you made another character. <laughs> no, where where my uh, ADD gets the the best of me. I'm like, oh look, shiny thing to the right. Oh look, shiny oh, thing to the right. Quest. Oh side quest. Oh side quest. Yeah, I'm level forty two, and I just beat Act One. Okay, the game well, stops at level 50. Yeah, I was going to say, I have seen somebody post a video that they beat it at level 40. Um, yeah, I am just, just finished Act 1 last night. I'm level 42. Well, you're still and, uh, you're still pretty much done with it. Um, <laughs> so as far as the Chipotle thing, I barely consider that. I, I don't know. Okay, let me, let, me, let me rephrase. I don't know enough about Street Fighter 6 to say. It, if you have to have these coins to unlock characters and that's the only way you can unlock them, then it's a scummy business practice. I don't uh, think so. I think it's just skins. If it's just skins, then I, I, that's a one. Like I don't even really, that's, that's marketing. That's making a little extra money on the side. That's not actually affecting gameplay at all. So I don't okay. have a problem with that. If it doesn't affect gameplay or people's ability to play the game, then it doesn't usually bother me. So, well, you know, like a one or a two at most. Okay. Uh, and the hot some pockets. Of the, the hot pockets thing. It was. It was just marketing. <laughs> like, I, you know, it didn't bother me. Uh, it's, it's kind of jumping the shark, as it were. I mean, you know, Dungeons and Dragons has kind of jumped the shark, but we've already talked about that before. Well, the movie is out of digital now, and so a lot of memes are coming out now that people have access to the digital copy of it. Um, I've seen some good ones on Reddit and TikTok and YouTube here or there. Um, a lot of people, I, I put an article out on our Facebook page talking about how the whether or not the like the move to digital early while the movie was still in theaters was a good idea or a bad idea. Mm -hmm. um, and overall, 
the impression that I got from the article and the video that the article was about was that they were sandwiched between John Wick 4 and Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. And the fact that they made any money at all <laughs> was surprising, given that people didn't go out to the theaters that much. And if they did, you know, they had yeah. two basically mega powerhouses to go up against. So they think they did really well, even though the actual box office return wasn't that great. So they right. were like, we're not going to get much more. We can go to digital early and see what the reception is after that. And overall, it's been generally positive and I don't really see very many negatives at all anywhere other than just like people being, you know, bitchy about it. Yeah. So the I good mean, chance he, for some more D and D related content in the future, movie wise. Yeah. Cause you, you have to realize the dungeons and dragons movie is pretty niche. So yeah. like all of the, all of the nerds are going to go see it at the theaters. Uh, but yeah, you know, once it goes to digital, I guess it's on Amazon probably. Paramount. Um, Paramount. Okay. So at that point, all the, the other people who didn't go see it are, you know, they're slowly going to start watching it. And like the life of the movie is going to be pretty long. Yeah. It's, it's on Paramount. You can get it on Amazon. So go watch it if you haven't yet. Uh, speaking of seeing movies, I know this is kind of off topic, but I did go see the uh, Across the Spider Verse today. Oh, that came out already? It, yeah, it came out this weekend. And it is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, one, I won't even call it a spoiler because everyone's going to find out about this, and it's actually really disappointing because I was not aware of it. Spider Pig? No, no, it is a to be continued. Oh yeah, it was part. Yeah, you didn't know that. I had no idea about that. Yeah, so the, the, I actually it's know not, a little I mean, bit about it's not, this. It's not like that. Yeah, you, you have to look it up to find out about this or hear. No, about I it knew that. Lot. I knew that for a while. How would, day, how, did, the, how would you know? Is it in the trailer? <laughs> No, 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 no. I just I remember re- I remember reading and seeing stuff about how good you, it was. Right, and, you, you read well, about it. Somebody had well, known about it. Well, this is when this is when the first Spider-Man came out. Uh, they said it was really good, and he had two more planned, and then that they were working on the two more, and they decided to go with one more, but extend the story into two parts. So they're I gonna never, have. Two I never more. heard about that. I never read about I, any of it. Well, so. I, I did. Well, it, for anyone who hasn't seen it, it is fantastic, just like the first one was. Uh, but it it actually ends with the line "to be continued." It's always good. <laughs> yeah, yep. But it's wonderful. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of those movies. Yeah, can't wait for the next one in three years or whenever the hell it comes out. Um. Also, right now on Twitch, if you have a uh, Amazon Prime. And your Amazon Prime is linked to your Twitch account, which it should be. It should be. And then you should come give your free Prime sub to me whenever I stream on Mondays, Tuesdays, or Saturdays. Um, The uh, Planescape Torment game from the nineties. Yeah, yeah. Is one of the is the free game is one of the free games right now on Twitch. Yeah. So if you use the Amazon game service, you can go uh, (laughs) pick up that game. And Planescape's coming out soon, so it's a if, Good if way somebody, to get started on that. If you are a fan of slow paced, methodical storytelling games with minimal combat, then that game is for you. It's it's an old game, so the controls are probably wonky as hell. But I, I remember playing it a long time ago and I was mostly just kind of bored, but I like I like combat in my games. That one you had yeah. to play you had to play like two hours just to get anything. Well, I mean, th- those games definitely had a a, a place back yeah. in the oh, back absolutely. at that time. I'm not sure how useful that style would be nowadays, whether or not people would actually yeah, actually go for it or not. There, but there was the um, there was another game kind of like that that came out recently that was good enough to get a sequel, but I don't think it was extremely popular. What was it? it was well, before. Idea? Um, I'd have to look it up. Okay. Uh, quick question. Do you know who Christina Scabia is? No. Okay. She is the lead singer of Lacuna Coil. Uh, I follow her on Instagram, and I saw her posting earlier today the Ouroboros book. Like, she oh, yeah? actually she has a physical copy of it. 
So, yeah, I haven't heard anything of that since that came out. Yeah, now I don't know. It might have been because she also is on an. She's an Italian, and she's on a TV show or some show, Twitch show. I don't know what it is, where they actually talk about gaming and gaming stuff. So you know, it might be a pre-copy that they sent to her to cover it on the show. But either way, Maybe. either way, it's probably not too far off for your copy. No, I have my copy. I've had my copy for a while now. The physical copy? Oh yeah. Oh well. All right. Well, I have nothing to say about it then. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've been. I, I read through it, and it was. It's. It's a very good setting, and it's a lot of fun. But the adventure never came out. That they. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I just thought you. I just thought you were working off the PDF. No, no, no. I, I got the full book. It's very nice. It, it was worth the money I paid for it. Uh, I got the adventure, or said I got the book. The adventure still is MIA. Um, they said they were coming out with it, but it was delayed due to COVID. But that was also at the end of like 2021. Oh, um, a few years and late then, now. Yeah, it's pretty late now. And on top of that, um, Chris Metzen went back to Blizzard as a lead developer for um, Wild Content. Diablo 4. <laughs> well, probably for some for Diablo 4, but yeah, but mostly for Wild Content. And that was before, that was during Shadowlands. So if he's back working for Blizzard again, I, I'm sure none of his focus is on Warchief Gaming, and it's just, it's kind of left as it is. So right. I'm, I'm not sure, like, what the status is. I'm, the Kickstarter hasn't been updated in a long time. Haven't heard anything. I've written to them a couple of times to try to get some of the writers on so we could talk about the, the book and, you know, never yeah. heard back. So that's a shame. Yeah, it is. Uh, I, yeah. It's, 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 it's a decent setting. It's very. It's kind of like if I was going to say if Diablo was a fantasy game and it, re- it already is, but yeah, um, if if Diablo was a um, magic punk kind of game, yeah, like we uh, talked about, did it, we? It, it, would, yeah. it, would, it would work a lot better. But I, yeah, like it, I, I know weird. we did a couple of streams about it, and yeah. I don't I don't remember if we talked about it much. I know we talked a little bit about it on the podcast, but uh, there were there's absolutely some things from that setting that I thought were fantastic. Yeah. So, uh, well, I, I hope you managed to get the adventure and whatever else was still slated to show up at some point. Well, yeah, I got everything, I got everything from my Kickstarter except for that for the starting adventure, which is supposed to be okay. via PDF. So, something interesting uh, since we're talking about games and getting them. Uh, my buddy Mike was at a he was at MomoCon this past weekend, and while he was there, Goodman Games was there. Okay. And they actually had physical copies of their role-playing games for sale. And he picked up Dungeon Crawl Classics. I think it was like half price or something. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it is a convention special or whatever it was. But for those who aren't familiar, Dungeon Crawl Classics is part of... It, it's a major part of what's referred to as the OSR. The uh, old school revival or revolution or whatever the, the term stands for. And I know we've briefly talked about OSR on here, but after he got that book and then I flipped through it, I came home and just ordered that book a lot. I, I, I did the, uh, they have a beginner's special online for 50 bucks. You could get it, the set of dice, uh, a starting adventure and DM screen, uh, as well as a pack of scratch off character sheets. Which is exactly okay. it, it is exactly what it sounds like, and I'll explain why here in a few minutes. So, but anyway, the OSR idea is um, it, it's going back to the old ways of playing and running games, uh, much more narration, less physical maps, physical miniatures less of that it, it's supposed to be played very theater of mind uh the rules are incredibly simple uh you know you don't need you don't need a million modifiers for this you don't need a million feats for your character most of what your character is expected to gain throughout the course of a campaign is through whatever deities they work for, whatever powers they bargain with, uh, whatever 
lore they hear about and actually go dig it up and make it happen. So, yeah. you know, like in in third edition D and D and fifth edition D and D, you get feats to do this, you get feats to do that, you gain all of these amazing skills as you're leveling up and abilities. And in the uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics, I won't say you don't get any of that, but it's kind of minimal. Yeah. So the idea is to role play it and make it happen. And I I just looked through this book. The artwork is very sort of 1970s. It has that old Dungeons and Dragons feel to it. And I was just enamored and hooked immediately. And unfortunately, yeah. I haven't had a chance to run it. We were supposed to last night, but unfortunately, people got sick and we couldn't. So we'll, we'll do it again sometime after LARP, uh, which yeah, we're, which is next weekend. But, uh, but yeah, so what, what are your thoughts on OSR? Because I know you have never really partaken of Dungeons & Dragons from back in the day. OSR being... Uh, the old school revolution or revival, just the idea of minimizing the rules to the game and just doing a good old dungeon crawl. <laughs> well, I, I've never played anything like that. You know, that's yeah. kind of the issue is lo- everything that I've kind of done has been campaign or modules or one shot kind of base things. Like here's a, you know, a dungeon or a castle and we're going to go through it and it's going to take four or five sessions, but that's it there's no like massive dungeon that takes forever to go through that you have to spend multiple excuse me years trying to like you know work your way through it yeah and um, and the, the simple the thing is with the osr you don't have to do that that's not the requirement a lot of it is going to just sort of be uh one-off adventures yeah so see a, a lot for me is, is it's more i i kind of miss the fact that we that when i started getting into role playing and tabletop the idea of a long campaign where characters are constantly weak and fighting for their lives just isn't a thing nowadays Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like hasn't been a thing since video games became very popular you know you're not wrong yeah wizard world of warcraft kind of killed it well even before that you know like you always you always take the role of the main character who's already just as good as anyone else out there like take the very first metal gear game yeah, on the nintendo fair. you're already playing snake snake as the or playing yeah. boss as as the, the top end of his ability you know you don't have to earn that that's where you start and yeah. you just get more powerful from there and that's how 4e and 5e has always worked it's just you start out super powerful yeah even third become edition more did yeah even even our larp was the same way where we start off at like, oh, yeah, you're making a brand new character. You start at level 3.5. Now it's level yeah. 5 you start yeah. at. I, yeah, when I started the LARP, it was still in the earlier stages, and I started at level 1. Yeah, <laughs> and no one, has to, no one has to find what spells are, because they're all in the book. They're all known now. Yep. And that's the problem with like Dungeons & Dragons as a whole, is like all the spells are known. You know, It doesn't yes. make sense where you have to go out there and find and figure out how magic missiles works. Because everyone casts magic missiles. Yeah. You can go to the, the D&D version of Walmart and pick up a magic missile scroll. <laughs> you know? You're, you're are, not, you're not wrong. Books. Yeah. So, like, the idea of a, a dungeon crawl to me is, like, all that's stripped away. Okay? Okay. Like, it's, it's so far stripped away. It's almost like um, Crawl or... Yeah, or Conan. Um, it's very Conan-esque. Yeah, very Conan, very Crawl. Even the Ewok movies, I, I would kind of put up there too, where like you have these people who just are not made to go out on adventures that are put in a situation where they have to go out on adventures and get stronger along the way. Oh, Willow. Willow's a good example of that. Like, well, I've never seen Willow. I, I know you haven't, but Willow <laughs> was a quote-unquote sorcerer who couldn't do a simple magic trick at all. Yeah. Like yeah. He was terrible. He, you know, he's not built for adventuring and that yeah. movie he has to go on a high adventure or bilbo baggins not meant for adventuring but here he is well like e- even even lord of the rings is mm-hmm. is not that way like if you take yeah yeah the hobbits themselves were not built for adventure but that's just the way that they are but there's still something magical about them 
So when Bilbo and Frodo and the other three are kind of taken out and whisked on an adventure, they're just handicaps there to drag down the real adventuring party, <laughs> which is the fellowship. And they're already top ass class people. Like, yes. Yeah. You know, so that, like that was he, that was the uh, the that was your level 10 characters going out on an adventure and taking their level one buddies with them. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, Sam, Sam and Frodo's adventure was was very different where they started out very low, but they didn't really gain, you know, any real experience, you know. I mean, I guess, I guess when when Sam sol- sh- soloed uh, Shelob, you know, that was a hell of a experience boost and level. Oh game. yeah, yeah, he gained at least three <laughs> levels off of that. So, but but overall, I mean, that you know, everyone everyone in that was already like maxed out. So, so your thoughts, just weird. Yeah, your your thoughts on the OSR are very very accurate for what Dungeon Crawl classics are. Yeah. Uh, so when you start this game you uh, they they refer to it as the funnel and the idea is you are going to make three or four brand new characters and you can make three or four characters in under 15 minutes it's that simple i mean you have a scratch off it sounded like yeah you can use the scratch offs which are just pre-made characters but if you want to make them yourselves you can and Nearly everything is randomly generated. You have the six ba- kind of basic stats. They don't. They got rid of the wisdom score, but added a luck score. Uh, wisdom sort of falls under personality in this version, but otherwise it's strength, dex, con, etc. And you roll them down the line, 3d6, whatever the hell you get is what you get. And you are not a level one character. You are a level zero peasant. Mm-hmm. And you will you will roll for your occupation starting out, and your occupations can vary. You know, it's a complete chart uh, percentile based. You might have been a you might have been a blacksmith, you might have been a poop smith. It, like one of the the uh, class, one of the occupations you can have is the gong farmer, which is actually a person who cleans privies. Um, mm-hmm. Farm that gong. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but it is also possible to be a dwarven blacksmith or an elven, elven whatever, elven, elven florist. Listen, um, the elves and dwarves are just a class. Uh, they are. <laughs> there are seven classes in this game. <laughs> there is, uh, and I could be a little off on the terminology, but there's the fighter class, the thief class, the magic user class, your cleric, dwarf, elf, halfling. Those are your classes, but you will not have any of those classes starting out. You start out at level zero. You will have one to four hit points starting out, uh, plus whatever con modifier you happen to get. And the reason you make three or four characters is that you are going to be playing three or four characters on that first adventure all at the same time. Cool. Uh, yeah, so effectively everybody is playing three or four characters. If you have a party, yeah, everybody gets three characters. If you have a party of five players, there are 15 characters being played at the same time. And yeah, the re- go ahead. there's a couple of games that, that are kind of like that nowadays too, like Darkest Dungeon, where you kind of build like a small army of people and take only a couple in at a time. Yeah, yeah it could vary depending on the adventure that you're running on how many you take in. But the basic idea is that you will be running all of them at the same time. And realize most of them are not going to (laughs) live because you you have one to four hit points. And when you're a zero level peasant, if you hit zero, you're just dead. There's no healing that'll help you. There's no anything like that. You just you just die. And the idea is to play through this opening adventure, which will have some encounters, monsters, traps, puzzles, whatever it may be. And whoever survives it will probably get to first level. Uh, And at first level, then you actually get your class. Uh, If you happen to roll the occupation of dwarf, you know, dwarf and blacksmith or whatever, then you are a dwarf class. Elf, halfling work the same. Humans, you get to pick one of the other four classes. I've always liked the fact that dwarf and elf were their own class because, like, I mean... They're pretty much like they're. For the, my my understanding was like their society is when you're born you become an elf. And when you're born and you're a dwarf, you pretty much just do one thing always. Yep. Your job, everything you are, is just being a dwarf, just diggy diggy hole all day. Yep. And because you're a dwarf, 
all you do is just approach things from that perspective. You know, I just diggy diggy holes all day. There's nothing else better to do. But it's hard for us as humans in our real world sensibilities to be like, no, why wouldn't I want to be a dwarf that's an that's a brewer instead and go through the brewer class? Like, no, all they want to do is dig holes. And this game allows you to do all of that. I, I just want to dig some holes. Yeah. And th- that's what I'm saying. It allows you to do that because it's role play. If you want to be this dwarf who, yeah, sure, you're a dwarf. You have you have the ability to fight. But, you know, if you want to have a mining thing going on, you, you can just role play it. Have it happen. Elves, all elves in this game are fighter mages. But it doesn't mean that you can't role play them differently. You're just not going to get different stats doing it. It's it, It's a very simplistic take on it. And I absolutely love it. I don't know if that's a simplistic take. I think that's the way it should be sometimes. It, yeah, that's how it and was. Not, not for not for D and D, obviously, because that's definitely changed. But like, yeah, it's its own thing. If you're making your own world, you know, and you have a an orc, just to kind of go with the stereotypes. Sure. And you have an orc, and the orc's like, I just like to hit things real hard. That's fine. That that's all they want to do. Yep. You know, and they can just do nothing but that. I mean, that's how 40k treats their orcs. Yeah. And it's fine. Yep, um, I, I agree. You know, it, it every setting can be different. If you if you run a setting, you know, where all orcs are just evil fighting, you know, meat bags, then that's fine. That's that setting. You know, if you want to have one where they're an extremely cultured civilization, do it. You know, you can run your setting how you want. Uh, but yeah, the, like I, I really dig this system uh you were talking about magic earlier uh you're talking about getting spells and you know oh you just go to the the store and buy a magic missile spell this one is not like that if you are a wizard you are going you're going to have a few little spells that you're going to know and be able to pick up along the way but if you want to get more spells uh you still do learn them at other levels but you don't auto learn them like uh, you know, say you hit a level where you could get fireball. First off, you have to know that fireball exists. Secondly, you have to figure out how to get it, and that could be taking it from another wizard. That could be bargaining with a devil. Uh, it could be hearing a piece of lore where you know this wizard a long time ago died, and his stash is in this location, and you may have to go find it. So everything about wizarding leads you to more adventure. It's That's never cool. as simple as I just get fireball at third level or fifth level or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, that's, that's, the, one, that's the one thing I kind of miss. It's just like that doesn't seem to happen much any no much anymore. And I kind of always want to kind of play that kind of system where you have to kind of earn the stuff and find it. Like honestly, you could probably write that spell for D and D where like. The spell is, you know, kind of like how they have the new create spell, modify spell, and, and write mm-hmm. spell in D and D. Honestly, we could just take it a step further and just be, you know, access the weave and roll for like, you know, what part of the weave you access, and then what the spell does, and then randomly what the effects are. That'd yeah, be kind of fun. Yeah, honestly, you I could write that. Yeah, I, I could put something together like that if I if I ever actually would sit down and do that. <laughs> Yeah, that's never going to happen. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, the, the simplicity of the system, it, it was very easy to learn it because it's it, it's straightforward. Um, let's see, what else? I think uh, a lot oh, of people are, a lot of people don't like the fact that they make a character and it's not them or not a part of them and that they, they can get lost. I remember I was even averse to that when I was playing, like back in the day when I played Final Fantasy on Super Nintendo. Yeah, there was some game out there, some role playing game that took took place over a couple centuries. And every time you played through the game, you would you could get different characters and you'd go through different events. So it was like this giant campaign with well, a giant war going on and stuff. Uh-huh. And like you would be a character and like your second character when the time skip happened would be like that person's son. So you would never be the same characters for a long period of time. If, even if you forced that character to stay in the game, eventually they would just die of old age. This it's like a number of centuries long from begin the game from beginning to end. Right. 
Um, I remember there was one character in it though that was a robot. <laughs> And it was the only character you could reliably take because he just from lives session forever, to yeah. session <laughs> because he just lives forever. But eventually, though, there was one setting that I remember that if you left him like digging some kind of trench someplace through a mountain and came back in a hundred years, that either the mountain fell on him or he rusted solid oh, no. and you couldn't use him anymore. But also because he failed to do that task because of other things that happened you don't have that access through that mountain and you can't progress the plot that way anymore. You're like you're locked off from that whole section of the game. What game is this? I, I could never remember. I, I have glimpses oh, of it in my head. Wait, it's a video but... game, a video game on a super Nintendo. Yeah. On the super Nintendo. Interesting. You know? um, it, hmm. I, I'm going to find out now because this sounds <laughs> fun. I, 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 wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if I played it. Uh, kind of like Seventh Saga. I know had a robot, but it may I, have been that. But I don't, re- I don't remember it playing that way. But it, it's possible. Uh, you would, yeah. You actually would pick a singular character, and then along the way, you would meet other characters. And there were seven total characters. Um, maybe it, is, maybe that is it. It's been a long time since I played it. But, I mean, heck, those those old RPGs on the Super Nintendo. This may be my age showing, but I think they were still the best. You know, I, I can't argue with that. Like, there's just that nostalgia for them. Yeah. Well, it's it's not even just the nostalgia; it's just the, the level of creativity that they had to put into making those. Like, you knew those characters and those situations and that artwork was real. You know. Yeah. And not like generated or kind of rehashed from something. I mean, everything is rehashed from something else, but. It just feels like it's even more like that every single day. It's like, how many times is there a cloud clone coming out there? Right. You know, cloud first at the scene, he was a unique, original, kind of freshish, freshish character for the American audiences. I'm making that distinction <laughs> for the American audiences. I just um, sent, I sent you a link for the Seventh Saga um, characters, so you can see what their artwork looked like. Um. So I just, I just. A lot of it's just like the everything was there you know, at that time, and everything seemed to be fresh. And maybe it was just because we were young and playing those games, and th- things things just don't seem fresh for us anymore. You know? Yeah, I can I can still actually go back and play a lot of those old video games, uh, the, the, specifically the role playing ones. I, I do occasionally go back and play the Final Fantasies, uh, some of the Dragon Warrior stuff. But I mean, they're they're still popular in Japan, but just. American audiences don't play that much that way anymore. Yep. And we've kind of moved on. Like even Diablo 4 has moved on with how like everything's now like an open MMO kind of feel to it. Everyone's there in the world. And, you know, the, the random generationness of it is now in certain areas and dungeons, you know? So like even just how times have changed is just influence how games have changed fully, you know, not for the bad, but just definitely for the different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's go. I'm going to go back real quick to Dungeon Crawl Classics. There was a couple other things I wanted to talk about on here. Uh, first off, it, they actually use crits and fumbles. So they, they have a they have crit tables and fumble tables. And the fumble tables aren't usually terrible. Uh, if you're you know, at level zero, they're they're pretty minor. You, you know, you go prone or you drop your weapon or something like that. Um, at higher levels, it gets a little worse, but there, there's nothing really, really life ending, which I'm okay with. Now, the crits, on the other hand, some of those are absolutely life threatening. Uh, this game does use its own dice system, which yeah. I'm, I'm not particularly a fan of, but it's not the worst thing ever. I think they did it honestly for marketing, uh, just to make more money, because you actually have to. If you want to do it right, you need to buy their set of dice because they use some weird shit like D7, D5, D30, uh, D24. That's weird. I agree. Um, it's a. I, I, I think they did that specifically just so people would buy the dice so they could make more money. Good on them. I know. You can still do it with the standard dice set. Uh, there, there are methods to do it, and they actually tell you in the book how to do it without their dice. 
So that was nice of them. Uh, but anyway, uh, they use a system. It's sort. It's called the dice chain. Uh, I always call it shift. Um, it was called shifting in other systems. And you know, say it, there's no advantage or disadvantage or anything like that. But say I'm on the high ground. You know, I am Obi Wan and I'm fighting Anakin. Uh, where normally I might be rolling a d20 to hit him, because I have the high ground, I get to roll that next step up, which is the d24. So it increases my chances of hitting him. Okay. Uh, so with the crit table, if you if you manage to land a crit, and it's still you have to roll the top number on whatever die you're rolling. So if you're rolling that d24, your crits are going to be a little less likely to happen. Uh, but if you manage to crit, then I think it was a d30 that you roll just to see what happened. And those higher numbers, are, uh, some of them are just instant death. Yeah, and it gives you very, very gory descriptions of how you die, <laughs> which I think is very appropriate. Uh, so, you know, one of them, if you're if you're stabbed, then it's like oh, it pierces both lungs that you bleed out in four rounds while gurgle, <laughs> while gurgling on your own blood. So, okay, it's it's a lot of stuff like that. Um. The other thing I wanted to talk about was corruption. And this is a wizard specific thing because we're talking about you have to bargain, you have to make deals. Every time you start messing around with spells, you have to roll a die. And every time you roll a one, you start gaining corruption. And the, the, the more times you fail, so the longer a wizard's in surface, they're going to just be more and more corrupt. And sooner or later, that just ends up taking you down a really bad path. And I, I am a huge fan of this because wizarding is not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to make you very, very powerful. But I mean, how many how many stories over the years have we read? How many video games have we heard of where the wizards just go bad over time? All of them. Yeah, it, it's a very, very common theme and trope. And I am down with it. I mean, they're accessing powers beyond their understanding. It's gonna yeah. happen. Yeah, I mean, you're you're literally making bargains with devils and demons to get access to more spells. Yeah, I mean, that's probably gonna go bad in the end. Yep. Gonna die. I mean, that's why you can't access the dark side powers at all. As much as uh, I've tried. Yeah, I know, right? I'm a ginger, so I I can just do it anyway. But. No, you can't uh, cast spells. You don't have a soul. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Before I get us in trouble here. <laughs> uh, that, 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 you need to have a soul to cast magic. That's why Undead yeah. can't cast magic. So this game, the one thing about this game, having read through it, having learned how to play it rather quickly, it actually makes me okay with running modules. D and D, I don't ever want to run modules because the modules tend to be complex. You know, you have to think of this and that, and it's just a whole hassle. This one, I feel like I could easily just pick up a module, read through it, and then run that shit. Because if I run it wrong, who cares? I mean, no one cares if you run a module wrong, anyways. Yeah, I know, but it, how many times I've I've listened to you on many occasions where you did something, you know incorrect during a module and then you hemmed and hawed about it for a few days oh yeah well i do something wrong but the players don't know that i did anything wrong i i know and they may it, have died because of it but it, again that's not my fault yeah that actually happened to be this week where we had two new players to at adventures league and one of them was like hey what where's the mast of the ship you know where the harpy is i was like what mast there's no mast and that's because there wasn't really a mass drawn on the map, so mm -hmm. I had no idea what he was talking about. But there's a mass in, in, on the when you read through the module, because a harpy lives there. Okay. <laughs> so, so he's like, oh, you said you're going to run it different, so there's no harpy. It's something else instead. Yeah, was that was like, totally my yeah, intention. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, hey, look, here comes the harpy. Oh, it's the same. Well, oh, he tricked me. Yeah. But, th but this game, it it's definitely designed to run just one shots it's designed for tournament play like they they even go over tournament play in the book 
That's which cool. is yeah, that's something that D and D does not go over at all because tournament play doesn't really exist with fifth edition. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't find. But I know again. it does. It can, but it's yeah. You know, they don't. They don't take that into account. I know it absolutely can, and I'm sure people do it. I know you do. Yeah. Speaking of, I don't know how I'm going to finish my module for the July event, ju- the July tournament with Diablo Four out. It's just not going to happen. All my free time is gone. Going to have to throw away your computer. That's what's going to have to happen. Then how am I going to write? <laughs> with <laughs> pen and paper, like real people. You do not want to read my handwriting. Well, you're the only one who has to read it. No, I have a tournament. I got to give it to DM so they can run it. Well, you write it down and then you type it up on a typewriter. On, on a typewriter. Who has a typewriter? <laughs> I mean, okay, you go to an antique store, buy you a typewriter. Then, then you go to an antique store and buy one that works because the first one didn't. Yeah, no, I, I don't know what you're going to do because of Diablo 4. Uh, you'll have to figure this one out on your own. Mm, I'll figure it out. Or you could, you know, you could just uh, grab one of these Dungeon Crawl Classic modules. No, I haven't mostly done. I just got to okay. write it down and draw a map. Yeah. Well, that's good. I'm trying to think of any more topics. No, I don't think we have any more topics. Just Goodman Games are great. Check them out. What's their website? Uh, I think it's goodmangames.com. Yeah. I, I really do want to check it out because I know that they've taken a lot of things and they have oh, a lot oh, of sorry. out there. It's, it's goodman-games.com. But, like, even my store has a lot of Dungeon Crawl classics. And I've, like, I've picked them up and looked at them and been like, hey, this looks really interesting. But yeah, I just yeah, haven't I, bought them yet. After finally getting access to it, I'm I had kind of been avoiding it because you know nobody else in my group had it, and yeah, I had read a little bit about it and seen a little bit about it. But now I'm now I'm all in. Uh, they also have their own fanzine as well. There's a, there's so much. Uh, I won't say it's a it's I guess it's official, but not exactly official. But a lot of it they actually start adding in other classes and stuff. Mm-hmm. And one thing I do enjoy about it is it does not necessarily take itself super seriously uh you can make your campaign if you want to run a campaign and make it super serious go right ahead but they also allow for some absurdity in some of the fanzines they added in some other classes and stuff and i I wanted to tell you about a few of them that i found that are just amazingly absurd uh so there is a barbarian and that's b-e-a-r you literally play a bear Okay. Uh, let's see. There is the Goat O War. Instead of Man O War, it's a Goat O War. You have to have you have to have belonged to a farmer that died while adventuring, and then you can play the goat. So it's like almost a way to unlock it. That's cool. And, yeah, and the Goat of War is just a fucking goat. It understands abyssal language, though. <laughs> it can't <laughs> all speak. Goats do. Yeah, I can't speak it, but it understands it. One uh, hoop stomp for yes, two hoop stomps for no. <laughs> tonk, tonk, double yes, the worst. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else was there? Uh, there is the Invincible Chicken. And it is the same thing, where you had to belong to the farmer. Farmer dies while adventuring. Uh, when you create your character, you roll up randomly to see what uh, what loot they have, what equipment and it is possible to start with a chicken. So if you happen to roll up a farmer, and then you happen to roll up a chicken, and then the farmer dies, you can play the invincible chicken. Okay. So it's it's kind of ridiculous. I don't think it's actually invincible, but you're you're playing a chicken that's adventuring. And it's called the invincible chicken. It's called the invincible chicken. He's very invincible. Yeah, I looked at I looked the stats up. He didn't really seem invincible to me. But and yeah, does he have hit points? He has hit points. He has, like, yeah. character-level hit points. He's not just 1d4. So he's invincible in chicken standards. Yeah, by, by chicken standards, this is super chicken. Uh, yeah. Like, he, I think he deals, like, a d4 or a d6 of pecking and, claw, uh, a pecking and clawing damage. So, like, he can legit kill somebody. Uh, I did say in the, the stats form, he is larger than a normal chicken. Wait, larger than a... Yeah. What was, what's considered a normal chicken? 
Uh, so he is larger than a normal chicken, but he is still small enough to fit into small spaces. So he is the equivalent of a small creature and not a tiny creature, I think it is. Because most chickens are, yeah, they're, they're not like a foot tall. They're not very big. I mean, chickens can get like three foot tall. I don't know about three foot tall. I've got a pretty big rooster here, and he's not three feet tall. No, I honestly literally just saw this. You're, you're not going to be riding him. Well, actually, I think you can ride the Invincible Chicken now that I think about it. Uh, anyway, the, there is a the Tarantino Elf is a class that you could play. Okay. It, it, it's like you're, you're you're an assassin straight out of a Tarantino movie, but you're an elf. Okay. And probably the most absurd one that I saw, and I, I really kind of want to play this at some point down the line, is the, uh, it's called Hot Dog Suit. You are a loser from the future who bumbles his way into you know, a portal that takes you to this magical realm. And you just play a dude in a hot dog suit. Hmm. Yep. But the hot dog suit, every time you get into combat, has a random AC. Uh, pe- creatures just don't know what the hell to do with you because you're, you know, they've never seen anything like that. <laughs> okay. and, and there's a there's a chance that mo- certain monsters might just run the hell away from you because they don't know what you are and you are terrifying. Yeah. You're a dude in a hot dog suit. What the fuck is that? So Jersey chickens average 13 pounds. Big chicken. And, and uh, are about two foot tall. So I'm clocking in around 2.8 feet tall, 17 pounds. So not three feet. 2.8 feet is three feet. That's not eight. That's not three feet. That's 2.8. Which is essentially three feet. It's like four inches short of three feet. Uh. <laughs> it's a big damn chicken, though. I'll give you that. <laughs> so, yeah, that, I guess that's that's that. Well, but to be fair, halflings and gnomes, they're about three feet or less. So it, they are you know, like four feet. So, yeah, but they, they're small creatures. So that would mean that the invincible chicken is a small creature. So we're looking at a two foot chicken. Yeah, you're, you're looking at a two, two foot two tall, ha- two to two and a half foot chicken. tall chicken. Yeah. Okay. I know what my next monster is going to be: the Jersey chicken. <laughs> the the Jersey chicken. Yeah. I didn't even know they, they had chickens in Jersey. They originated from New Jersey. That's why they're called the Jersey chicken. That's how they got that breed. That is wild. <laughs> Yeah, because I'm thinking chicken like six inches, eight inches, maybe. Yeah, uh, like, like a foot two, tall chicken, you know. It's... Yeah, not like two feet. Enjoy. Oh. Here's a here's a chicken of death. Yeah, I mean, how how can you go wrong with a game that lets you just make a team of of of, cre- of animals that you can just play? Uh, uh, like if we could definitely go through it with you know the bear the barbarian. The Invincible Chicken and the Go to War. There's your whole party. Just you know, play a couple of them. Oh, the chickens I saw from the TikTok were Brahma chickens. Yeah, now I've seen Brahmas. They're some big, sort of furry-looking chickens. They're not really. Yeah, furry they're like yet. they were furry. They look like yeah, they just feathers everywhere. Those were the ones I saw on the TikTok. So yeah, so Jersey chickens are just bigger than Brahma chickens. And then there's a Dong Tao chicken, which looks like. Also known as the dragon chicken, because he looks literally like a dragon. He's got these big, fat feet. Yeah, so... I mean, if, I, chickens, I, I, if chickens were eight feet tall, we'd be in serious trouble. Like, they are, <laughs> they, are, they are monsters, man. Like, they will kill anything that's small enough to eat. They would. What I they? mean, they're, they're dinosaurs. They're freaking dinosaurs. Yeah, they are. I'd eat so, a T-Rex, though. Would you eat a T-Rex? Oh, hell yeah. I eat chicken. I'd eat a T-Rex. Well, would you eat a Komodo dragon? Uh, I mean, maybe? I mean, I would I'm saying you would have to subdue, murder, and then devour a Komodo dragon. Uh, is it a matter of I'm going to starve to death? It's a matter of you have to somehow kill it, cook it, and clean it, and eat it. 
if I if I have other food options, then I'm going to take the other food options. But if that's the only food I've got, that's a dead Komodo dragon. Uh, that's that's fair. <laughs> I I hate I hate to go back to Diablo. I'm going back to Diablo one. Well, last I time. mean that's that's what this podcast is about. It's about chickens and Diablo. <laughs> So there's a town in Diablo. I don't remember what the name was, but you come across a town and everyone in there is starving to death. Okay. So like it's in the middle of like, like this, like kind of like farmland, this, and like there's a curse upon the land and they can't get any, any food. Ah, to grow yes, the, the classic cursed blighted land. Right. So I'm, they're looking around. It's like, yeah, we got to steal goats and you know, we don't have any food. And then like, I, I walk 10 feet and then there's like, seven or eight like healthy cow and like a flock of chickens and i'm like is this are these guys invisible to you you not murder this cow and eat it i mean granted i mean like you, you run through them pretty fast and I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't want to murder all your cows you want to keep the population going and all that i'm not a farmer i don't know but like if your option is starving to death or murdering that chicken i'm gonna murder that chicken <laughs> i'm gonna eat it if that chicken I, isn't laying eggs and I'm I'm really hungry, yeah, that that chicken's toast. Like I I'm all I mean, I'm all for let's say, you know, get the ground working, let's get you know vegetation growing and all that stuff, you know, cuz you can't just live just off of meat. Yeah, I mean, those cows that. are those cows won't live very long if they don't have food themselves. Right. So before they shrivel up and die, let's eat them. Yeah, exactly. I, that that sound that's just poor game design, uh, like whoever put that together. If you're running a D and D campaign and you have these people who are cursed, don't have cows just hanging around outside. That doesn't really make it was, sense. It was really weird. I, I still can't get by it. Yeah. Oh well. Play Diablo Four. It's great. I will be in two days, maybe, assuming I decide I want to. Oh, you want to. Uh, well, that means you, know, you need to be playing uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics. That's all I can talk about right now, because that's literally oh. where I've that's that's where I've been for the past three or four days. My brain just absorbing all of it. You set up a Dungeon Crawl Crack Dungeon Crawl Classics special podcast stream, and we'll record it and we'll release it for everybody to listen to. Yeah, you know that's never going to happen. It's out there. And people can bug you for it if they want to. What are you talking about? Like running it online? No, like we'll hop on. We'll hop on Discord and we'll run it. And um, That's, what is Discord? We'll record it. Discord's we'll online. Record. <laughs> we'll 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 record it and then we'll put it out as a special podcast. Yeah, that would require me to run it online. That's we not would, going to happen. But you said it's all theater of the mind. Yeah, it's. It, it still requires me to sit here and run a game online. Yeah. It's hardly online. Yeah. Your definition of online is 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 uh not valid. I'm I'm I currently am online right now sitting here listening yeah, to my, you. My exact point. All right, I'm done. Craig, go away. I gotta go back yeah. to the app before. No, we're not done here. No. All right, fine. Bye, Craig. I'll see you on Diablo in two days. No, you won't.